Alrighty, so um, with all that being said, I bet some of you are wondering, how can a facility that's three and a half Ford fields uh, be even allowed to locate in the middle of a residential community? Well, the answer to that is zoning. Um, zoning, if many of you may or may not know what it is, it is the tool that di dictates how developers and development shows up in your neighborhood. Um, it allows communities to regulate and control land uses, and these regulations essentially uh, stimulate or slow down different types of development and lay the foundation for your quality of life and all of our quality of life. Next slide. So we have developed a zoning equity color scheme. So at Detroit People's Platform, we have a community benefits ordinance training that we do for residents. And talk to us about it after this if you'd like to sign up for one. But in that training, we help residents understand zoning um, from a very, very broken down perspective. So that includes through an equity color scheme chart that we've developed. So I want you guys to think of, um, you know, the Roy G. Bib essentially, right? So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then of course pink at the very end. And so consider red uh, being those uses R1, R2 that are the lowest possible impact you can have in the community. Um, R1, R2 more than likely are the houses that most of us live in. Um, and then of course, uh, M3 to M5 being that very, very large scale, very intensive, heavy industrial use. And so you don't have to remember all this. We'll work through it actually when I can go to the next slide. So um, again, just to give a visual picture, think of R1, R2. Again, many of you probably recognize your homes being reflected in R1, R2. R3, R4 is where you about start to see like condominiums, um, very small walk-up apartment complexes. And think of R5, R6 residential development is like um, the major apartment complexes you might see in like a downtown. I hope I'm not blocking anyone's view. Next slide. Um, and so the same thing goes with commercial. So as you can see, as you work your way up in the numbers across the different designations, the higher the number gets, the heavier and more intensive the use gets, right? So B1, B3, think of your mom and pop shops, local small businesses you might frequent like on a liver noise or a Grand River, versus B4, B6 being like a Little Caesars Arena. A huge mixed use, use industrial complex. The Amazon facility actually at the state fairgrounds is also zoned B4. Um, and you can go to the next slide. And then we move on to industrial zoning. So you have two different sort of classes of industrial. You have light industrial, then you have heavy industrial. Um, light industrial exists around M1 and 2. So that's about where you see, um, many of you probably recognize in this, this lower right-hand corner here, we get in District 7, we see a lot of these buildings, right? Like if you drive down Joy Road, Livernois, you see a lot of these buildings that take over huge swaths of land. They're not necessarily tall, and it's always pretty ambiguous as to what's happening in Side, right there in the windows, just like huge brick, you know, warehouse looking structures. Those are typically light industrial facilities where they have operations, um, very small scale, but still um, heavy, um, in a sense, industrial operations going on, light manufacturing, things of that nature. It's also about where you start to see the cannabis grow facilities pop up. So now we're seeing more of those in the city. And when you see those, you know, those big green buildings pop up, and they're not massive like an automotive plant, but they do take up a pretty significant impact. Those are about M1, M2 facilities. Next slide. And then lastly, we have the heavy industrial zoning, um, which is M3 to M5. So this is about as heavy as you can get in terms of impact, um, really across all of the zoning categories. Um, and this is where you typically see facilities like the Chrysler plant over on the east side, that's an M4 zoning. So think of them as an automotive maker, right? Um, major facility, think of the Marathon refinery, right? Over in District 6, that's an M4 project. Um, and then of course the AMC site. Now, Councilman Durhall, did mention that the AMC site is light industrial. Um, I wish he were here because I want to clarify that the zoning for the AMC site is heavy industrial, it's not light industrial. The past use at the site was light manufacturing. I think that might be what he was mentioning, but I think it's important to make this distinction because the past use at a site does not dictate the future use. The zoning di dictates the future use. So that is to say, you know, at this site, they could have done light manufacturing in the past. That does not mean that that's what they have to do now. Technically, the zoning ordinance by right allows heavy manufacturing, heavy industrial. So if this developer chooses to do that as an automotive dealer and, you know, have an impact at an M4 level, they are by right allowed to do that. So I just want to make that distinction. Next slide, and so this slide is intended to give like an 
overview of all the different classifications. So as you can see, again, starting with the red, the lowest possible use, and as we move up through categories, you see where we get the major industrial at the very end in pink. Next slide. And so um, this, that, those visuals are important because we created a zoning color scheme map for this neighborhood, much like the ones that we create in our CBO trainings, to basically give a visual, a colored visual of how zoning looks like in our community. And when we did the color scheme for this neighborhood, immediately what was jarring to us um, is that you see all of this pink co-located with all of this red. And again, if we remember, red is the least intensive possible zoning category that we have in this city, and pink is the heaviest. And so we see, looking in this neighborhood, in this impact area, that there's a ton of pink zoning woven all up and through um, this very uh, residential area. Um, so why is this important? Um, these things are important because heavy industrial development is a lifetime commitment. What I like to call it, it's a marriage. Unlike many other uses that you see in communities, heavy industrial is undoubtedly like the biggest marriage that I believe residents can enter into development-wise. If you consider, um, think about this project, for instance. This project was opened 100 years ago. I'm sure at one point this site employed a ton of people and probably was a source of great economic vitality for the community. And if this site is developed, I'm sure, you know, between the, the, the look of the new site, which means we get rid of the dilapidated site, they're going to employ folks, it's going to become active, but we can't allow, you know, us, uh, we, we can't not forget um, that even though that the potential of having a new site and having employment is all possible and it's great, um, what happens when all that goes away and what we're left with and what we shoulder the responsibility of when these facilities are no longer open and active. And as we can see here with this site, this site has been closed for years, yet Detroiters are still paying for it today. Our tax dollars, because the city of Detroit is publicly owned, we pay right in our tax dollars to make sure that the city can maintain it. We're paying again once this developer goes after tax credit. Credits, um, and they're using these tax credits like the MEDC described to help with their rehabilitation. You know, the site has been closed for years and we are still paying for it and we're going to pay to help it become redeveloped. And so if you think about those long-term responsibilities that we have as residents to these facilities, even after they've closed, it can kind of, it, it starts to make you think about, well, what should this project look like when it shows up? So that if something happens to it, the community is not left shouldering so much of the responsibility. Um, and to also actually go back to the last slide, I, just, I also just want to highlight again that this is a brownfield site, and so that is why the developer is able to apply for brownfield tax dollars to get it remediated. Next slide. Thanks, Renard.